episode. Bye. Yoga training. I was actually learning a lot about what's possible with their muscles. Usually our if you're a regular listener, you'll have heard me talk about crypto and how it's the future. I've learned from all my mistakes through trial and error since 2015, and I never make a mistake twice. I was going round in circles investing small amounts that I decided just to trust my intuition and go for it properly with big money. And so I borrowed £7,000 on the credit cards, which was a massively ballsy move, which I would tell no one to do, and got my balance up to 35 k in two months. So I've decided to set up a Discord group where I will inform the group when I'm placing my trade and what coin I'm trading so you can copy me if you wish. I compound my balance but you can trade with whatever amount you can afford to lose. I trust myself and my system enough to trade with a million pounds which I will do one day soon but that's me. You're in control whether you copy me or don't. There is no fee. Join my Discord group to receive real-time notifications when I trade. Link is in the podcast description. Whether you join or not I will still be trading. The only difference is you can do too. Muscles are either tamasic or rajasic. Tamasic means they're lethargic and there's not enough energy in them, or they're rajasic, which means there's excess energy and they're hyped up and it's just like vibrating or, or on that spectrum. And sattvic is where you want them to be. It's the exact perfect amount of energy for the situation. And our bodies are hardly ever optimized because our mind isn't engaging with our body. So we're not aware of all of the energy in our body. We're not aware if some of our muscles are, are using too much or too little energy. Uh, but when, when you clean out all of these tensions that you have, like think about getting a massage, like there's all these like knots in your, in your muscles, but those knots take up energy. They're energy blocks, they add resistance. Some of them are constantly using energy. So when you get rid of all of these, these inefficiencies in your in your muscles and in your nervous system like the amount that you're capable of is is way more than than what you think and this was made really clear to me when I was having a conversation with my dad and we were betting on what animal has the most powerful like punch or kick you know, so I was thinking like, you know, a gorilla, those things are really strong. Imagine a punch from a gorilla would be like, just mind blowing. And then, and then my dad reminded me of a kangaroo and yes. a kangaroo, they can kind of hop up on their tail. And with two feet, they can like, boom, they can really, really like do damage, but you'll never guess what the very, the very top, uh, the biggest like limb based power like what that what animal uh, that probably a crocodile's tail crocodile's tail i'll tell you it was actually a human a human kung fu master their kick is more than three times as three times the power of a kangaroo so what what type of kick i i don't i don't know which type of kick but i would imagine probably be like a straight line direct kick uh probably a sidekick but that that's just my guess um but the reason why is because humans our mind is just going to be way more focused and way more engaged than even a kangaroo and when you spend 30 40 years training and focusing your energy on how to have the most powerful kick humans have that unique capability to really really like optimize their body in a specific way so all of this to say the qigong grandmaster when when he caught that engine and and put it on the ground in that split second decision he's been training and priming his body not just in strength it's actually more more about the mind than the strength but he's been working with that energy flow so it, it really incredible things are possible when you have that level of focus Can you just retell that story again about the engine thing? Like break it down. Yeah. Okay. So, so basically he's in, we're going to call him Seagong Grandmaster. So he's in the back of a trailer and his friend is driving the pickup truck and there's an engine in the trailer with him in the back. So they're driving and there's some sort of a, a hill that they're going down or up or or something like that. And and then there's a sharp turn and a bump. And basically what happens is the the trailer pivots sharply. It goes up on one wheel, sending Seagung and the engine 
flying off to the side. At which point, Seagung is always in tune. It, 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 you didn't catch him just like thinking about what he's going to have for dinner. He was in <laughs> tune already. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know, he's already <laughs> focused on his mindset, uh, his, his mindset, his body, and all that. So he can handle the situation. He lands on the ground and at the same time catches the engine and redirects it to the ground without it blowing up. Like if it, if it had hit the ground without any sort of energy investment from Seagung, would have would have blown up or, because I guess that's just what engines do. I'm imagining it would have blown up or it at the very, very worst case uh, or, or very best case, it could have broken the engine and uh, it could have even landed on him or damaged him. Or yes. Something. So the, even if it doesn't blow up. So I, I don't know exactly what would have happened, but he was able to catch the the engine as it's falling and i'm i'm imagining now and, and i don't know for sure i'm imagining he's using the the force he's not resisting it yes like stopping, he's going he's with it working with the momentum yes probably spiraling it around his yes. body and and placing it on the ground yes. without any sort of damage to the engine damage to him or any sort of blow up it's like ring a ring of roses when you're swinging with your friend, she's leaning back and you're leading the other way. You're not falling because you're but counteracting the weight of each other. So you're right. I don't think he would have pushed against the engine. He like a boxer. You just have to knock the glove and it just sort of goes the other way. He would have sort of put his hands on it, swung around it and kind of use his energy to offset the thing until it sort of stationary becomes stationary on the ground without any force. Um, Darren Brown, he did this thing where he went into like a class of um, martial arts people and um, this person was punching one of his students and then he gets winded, right, physically, right? And then Darren Brown goes behind the guy. The guy's facing the other way. Darren Brown does his energy, mindset, whatever thing. And then Darren Brown imagines punching the guy in the back using the chi and the energy. He focuses on the back where he's going to punch. He pulls his hand back and goes punches him of where his back is, but doesn't actually touch the back. He doesn't punch him. There's no physical contact, but the guy reacts in the exact same way as if he's being punched. So the guy was reacting to the energy based on where Darren Brown was focused, right? Yeah. So what that tells me is that, for example, in say martial arts, right? These are the biggest kickers a human. A kangaroo will just kick out of routine, out of pattern, just kicks and hopefully the animal fucks off. Humans can focus energy, universal energy with that kick. So it's not saying that, although it probably is connected, that energy with a physical object is more powerful because it is. It's also saying that there is a, a magnetic charge coming from me and the magnetic field that you have that like two North Pole magnets when they get close, they repel. So if you try and get a North Pole magnet and go quickly to another North Pole magnet, it will fucking shoot back. If you go slowly, it will move back slowly and then only be like a small gap. But if you get two magnets and go really quickly, boom. So that's the same as focusing on that person where you're going to kick them. But the reason why it could be so impactful is without understanding the fact behind this, is some, probably something to do with the magnetic charge with where you're focused and it's actually their energy responding and kind of feeling that impact as opposed to the actual physical punch because otherwise the kangaroo would be you could say just as powerful but it's something to do with the mind where you're focusing on it and we don't understand like i mean there is cameras that will show light radiation coming off of something like an aura right and actually the other day i was thinking about is there a machine or camera that can see a thought leaving the body so if i think about you, for example, can I see my thought in, in terms of some light frequencies, patterns, pixels, going out my house and flying out into the moon and coming back to you? Is there a camera that can pick up thoughts as opposed to just the aura of somebody that you know of? Like, can you see a thought leaving your body? I, I don't know of, of such a thing. Um, I would imagine that thoughts may be connected to that magnetic biomagnetic sort of energy or a more subtle version of that um and i i, I feel like thoughts i i i would say thoughts are like they're probably not 
words either. They're probably like, I, I don't know. I, I get the sense that they're very like holographic in nature. So like if, if the same thought were to come to you and me at the same time, it may not manifest with the same words or the same images, but would probably create, it would probably be some element of consistency. So I, I don't know how that would be I've got I've, I've got an excellent way of explaining that. Okay, yeah. imagine an Indian person sat next to a Chinese person, sat next to a French person, sat next to an African person, right? Right? They all think the same thought and the same action happens, but they all speak a different language, which means the language has no relevance. They could, all these people could be sat in a line and they could all think of the same place, a specific part of the ocean where there's a tree under a rock. They all go there based on a thought, but they all speak different language, which means it has nothing to do with the language. The language is a sound vibration that we recognize and kind of relate to an action. But what is a sound? It's just a very high, 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 high vibration. So if it's a low vibration, it's so quiet that you can't hear it. If it's a really high vibration, you can now hear it. Like a dog can hear certain frequencies that we can't. So words are high vibrating words are is is energy that's high vibrating so quickly that we can hear it but it's just all energy yeah. and energy um i don't know i don't know whether it's through, through like evolution that we recognize that we've related energy frequencies and kind of feel them and we've related it to action like eating or going there um I, I, there is a way for that to happen because certain sounds, like if you say the word ha, like H A, ha, like there's a certain place in your body that you feel that. And it's usually around ha. the heart, ha. right? Ha. There's a feeling of like the air moving right around the heart area. So that, that sort of stimulates the heart area. And if you do like ing, ing, in, you're feeling it around your in, nose it's sort of in your head um, and if and you're gonna go like, hum back your head hum yeah um, I, I hear that i feel that yeah um, so th there is actually like a, a uh, physical effect of a sound so th and, and what i mean by that is that there's an inherent meaning in each sound because different parts of your body like like part of your body vibrating isn't just your body's vibrating it's it, there's there's actually neurons there there's memories especially where there's neurons and, and there's neurons in your heart too so like things that are more emotional may have that sort of an origin with the ha sound whereas things that are more maybe primitive or something doing at the back of your head and then this is just a theory you'd have to actually talk to somebody who studied this a lot more but i, I like combining that thought of inherent meaning in in sounds with just sort of the human creativity of coming up with sounds to represent things that they see like ma and pa and then the evolution of that across time so the combination of those two is probably somewhere somewhere closer to the truth <laughs> yeah that's, yeah that's that's interesting because like like an, an elephant is bigger in mass so should have technically more energy coming off it or high frequency or something like that because it's a life force the same as a rock and a tree has different energy compared to fish each organ has a different purpose it will give off different energy the heart constantly working it will have massive amounts of energy the liver or the pancreas which only kind of works when say you're drinking or whatever different vibration so if you had that vibration under like a, a sound translator it should be vibrating differently one's a high pitch one's a lower pitch right and that, I suppose that goes down to the chakras, you could say, where different parts of the body have different energies. And if you're stressed in some way or you're unhappy, then your energies are out of sync. They're not in harmony. And all this chakra work is about making your body and organs vibrating at the heart, at the vibration they should be vibrating at. Um, mm -hmm. But to the, 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 the ma and the pa, does an Indian kid or Chinese kid or black kid also say ma and pa as their first word? Or is it, say, um, English people, white people that see that that's a mum and a dad, so they mimic the sounds that 
they've unconsciously heard in the womb or what the mum says, go, go and see dada, go and see da. So the child, you know, mimics it. Um, if you were calling, say in Africa, calling that kid tree, go and see tree, would the baby's first word be tree, tree? You know what I mean? Mm. Or is it something to do with like the vibrations of, of a new life that yeah. all vibrates the same and it comes out as the vibration of ma or pa? Does that make sense? Mm. Yeah, and, and there's another factor here. Um, we, we don't know with certainty what our origin is. So it's very possible that we have, we, there's been influence from another star system or another species. We, like, we don't know. I, I just consider that as equally probable as, as all of the other theories. So we may have come with vibrations already being given to us from a, a, a previous race, a previous civilization, um, to some extent, like some seed phrases or something like that. And I, and the reason why I, th I think of this is because all of the ancient languages, um, well, at, at least the big ones that I that I'm aware of, like uh, Aramaic, uh, Sanskrit, Hebrew, like these really old languages, they have a letter and a number associated with each other. And, and there's patterns across these languages. And so that just makes me think that, well, I mean, it's possible that they could have originated from just an even older human civilization, uh, or there could be some extraterrestrial influence from another civilization that has come in and seeded a, a language. And, and I guess part of why I think this is because there's so many stories in these ancient, in these the ancient uh, cultures that talk about being gifted language, uh, kind of like the movie Arrival. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen that that movie, but it is a fascinating movie. Uh, definitely watch it. Anyways, like this this gift of a, a language from an extraterrestrial species. I, I think it's it's a very fascinating concept. So I would I would add that into the mix of inherent meaning plus uh, evolution of, of linguistics across time. Uh, as people spread out, they start saying things with their own curves and unique ways that they like. Maybe somebody had a lisp and then he became Spain. I don't know. Spain. <laughs> like they have a lisp. <laughs> and really, what he meant to say was France, but it came out as Spain because he had a lisp. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I, I don't know. Like, if you see the way they say, like, gazpacho, it's like gazpacho. Yeah, it's just <laughs> so fucking I, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't mean to like oh, to make fun of it. It's just I I find it funny. And, and, but I mean I'm sure I sound funny to to oh, Lord. Well, probably to you uh, with my Canadian oh. way of saying everything. Uh, but anyways, yeah. So you could see, I I don't think we'll ever know. I think that that even the the need to know is I I really like to think of the need to know as something that's kind of corrupted. Like there's this Christian story of Adam and Eve where in the Garden of Eden, what the fall of man was described as being was when they wanted to know good from evil. Before that, there wasn't good or evil. Everybody says before that there was only good. No, no, no. You can't have good without evil. Before that, people were just doing their thing. And then whatever they, they were doing. Know, huh? They would just do whatever they were doing. And no one said they that people doing. shouldn't do yeah. that. But the, but then then what happened was they were like I need to know I need to know something I need to know it for sure I need to know it that it's true when when you when you want to know what good is you create evil when you want to know what's true you create lies so all of this is kind of like this idea of needing to capture something definitively in the brain and it, and it's funny because one of the curses of this was the idea of work. The, the curse was that to Adam, Adam will now uh, have to work in the field. And Eve, Eve will now have pain when childbearing. Now, I don't think there's anything different that happened before or after other than a mindset shift. Because what's the difference between, you know, doing activity in the field that produces food and working? Well, the difference is your mindset. So his mindset of needing to work uh, is like, well, he's differentiating work from, from play, activity he has to do from that, which he doesn't, which is that good versus evil split or, or that life and death split. Again, one of the curses was you'll now, 
you'll now have this idea uh, of death. Your days will be numbered because now you're defining what's going on in this body instead of just my general stream of consciousness. There's this idea of like splitting off of things. And then Eve, Eve now has pain when childbearing because she, she now differs like pleasant sensations from unpleasant sensation and creates this this split anyways so the whole moral of, of this story as as i see it is that we don't need to know like when we can give up this this need of needing to definitively have an answer like <laughs> like like our, our whole you know like education system academic system they always want to know for certain that this is the way it is and this is the way it was and and it's absurd to me so I like to leave it at, when we're talking about linguistics, I like to leave it at, these are some interesting factors that could have, could have been involved. Am I going to know? I mean, <laughs> not with certainty, not, not unless I get some sort of holographic information from some sort of Akashic record, or I, I don't even know, or some download from an extraterrestrial, where I become God or something. And even, even then, they probably wouldn't even say they know. They probably just have more information. Anyways, I'll I'll, <laughs> I'll stop talking with that. It was just that's just something I'm really excited about. This idea of needing to know and and releasing that for our peace of mind. <laughs> so my dad always used to say, um, it's more exciting to see a woman <clears throat> in her bra and knickers than seeing her naked because once you've seen her naked, there's nothing else to see. Like you've you've got it. Now you move on. Whereas Imagine always seeing somebody in their bra and knickers for your whole life. Every single day for the rest of your life, you now have this feeling of, oh, I want to I wanna see. I really wish I could see. It's exciting. It's something to work forward and work forward towards, right? So me, to me, a fact is something that a scientist has concluded because he didn't seek any further information or majority have believed it that you've become it's become lost where it ever came from so nothing is a fact hence why when i talk about something i don't care whether i'm speaking truth or not because eventually it will become true if somebody questions it enough and i'm just that person until somebody questions me otherwise right um, so basically facts don't matter because it's all nonsense secondly if you um give up the need to know then you're always excited and questioning everything. I've realized through working out so much shit growing up that now I have all the answers that I wanted to know. Life is pretty boring because for me, the drive to learn or meet new people or do something was about finding out something I didn't already know, right? Which is what the Tourette's was. It was just too much shit in my head, too many questions, too much fucking is there a god how does he eat in the sky is there restaurants up there does he breathe but there's no <laughs> there's no oxygen so how does he breathe does he have any lungs but why has he got to be a man why can't it be an animal like there's a god is a dog's god different to a human like is it that means there's more than one god it just question after question right um so so and then i realized it's actually exciting not having an answer is there a god is there heaven is there hell you know does she have a hairy fanny like because once you know these answers it's like now what it's boring so yeah, absolutely. Give up the need to know because it's nice to, to wonder. It's nice to wonder, you know, is there, is there, is there extraterrestrials? I don't want to know for certain if there is or there isn't, because if there isn't, then that's boring. And if there is, then what's there to know? It's like, there's a kangaroo over there. Yeah, I know it's a kangaroo. There's extraterrestrials over there. Yeah, I know. I want to be like, is that an extraterrestrial or is that a kangaroo? And then, and then have this excitement every time I walk past it. I still don't fucking know, but I'm pretty sure it is. And then you're like, no, Chris is like, no, because it hasn't got legs and it has to have legs if it's an extraterrestrial. And you get into like a deep conversation, your brain stimulated. And then we end the podcast and we're like, fuck me, that was a great conversation because you're fired up with ends of endless possibilities. Whereas if you're telling yeah. me that's a kangaroo, I, okay, that's fine, Chris. What do we speak about? Podcast is boring. This conversation is boring. I'm bored. People listening are bored because they know it's a kangaroo. So you hit that on the head. <laughs> yeah you know it's funny <laughs> i went out the other day with my with my mother to look at this unusually large storm it all started when my mother had a somebody sent her a facebook post that said that the storm was funky colors and that's unusual and i i don't know what conclusion they were deriving if any from that but but at any rate then a storm happened and I was with my mom and we were like, wait a second, this is an unusual storm too. So because I'm open-minded, I went out to investigate 
And we were, my, my mother and I were outside for about 20 minutes watching the storm, really trying to see, like, is this storm a natural storm or an unnatural one? And what does it even mean if it is unnatural? <laughs> is, is, is there such a thing as an unnatural storm? Anyways, so we're looking at the sky. And what's weird is that there was no thunder, uh, or I guess lightning rather, that, that's going down and striking the earth. There was just all of these like lights coming out the top of these clouds and they were very large and they were they were focused in three distinct areas and we were just sitting there or not sitting there standing there trying to find the best view like watching it and just trying to deduce you know my mother's coming from a christian grid she's like are these angels warring in the sky getting rid of some bad thing mm -hmm. and i'm like hmm and i'm like well and i'm coming at it from my my most my most enjoyable grid is, is extraterrestrials i love that one the most and i'm like is it extraterrestrials fighting some cabal in the sky <laughs> and then i'm like well i also have to be like but maybe it's just a lightning storm <laughs> so, a fucking cloud. so that i'm watching for about 20 minutes and i'm enjoying it because I, I have not seen one lightning like a normal lightning strike going downwards from the cloud the whole time it's all upwards and flashes and i can never clearly see anything after 20 minutes, I saw clearly one lightning strike the ground. And then I'm like, well, I'm going to say it's probably not extraterrestrials or angels, but, but you never know. Maybe they're causing, maybe they're causing electromagnetic disturbances. <laughs> I have no idea. But at any rate, that was satisfying enough for me to go inside and, and still leave it at like a, a wondering place, but like a little bit less so now. <laughs> Yeah, like it's so exciting. Think about how how excited you got, and like how your brain was going through like millions of variations of possibilities, and could it be this? Could it be that? How you felt, and then you compare that to, oh, it's a storm, and then you enjoy yeah. it. And like I've seen a storm before; it's just a storm, and then you go in. Whereas no, you're present watching that thing as a unique experience based on how it makes you feel, with all these kind of yeah. possibilities. And at the end of this day, you, you're never going to know. It could have been angels or Jesus. And that's also exciting, the fact that you just experienced something and you didn't have answers for definite. It's like um, uh, watching a James Bond film and it ends on a cliffhanger or, mm -hmm. you know, to be continued. That's what yeah. everything in life should be, to be continued, rather than, you know, James Bond dies at the end. That's boring. Like, that's why Netflix is so good because it always links to the next one. Whereas if that was a film then you'll be done within two hours. And if you probably get bored halfway through anyway, because you kind of know where it's going. Whereas Netflix series, you don't know where it's going. So you're constantly engaged. And that comes down to not knowing where it's going. Not that's knowing, is this Jesus? Is this an angel? Who knows? But that's what's exciting. The fact you don't know. And, and maybe, maybe that's why people keep, I, I like the idea of rebirth. And I, I like the idea that people choose to be born again. And, and I like, and I, I'm just enjoying this idea that's coming to me right now is that hmm. what, what if the reason people keep choosing to be reborn or souls keep choosing to be reborn or whatever is because they're hooked on a cliffhanger. <laughs> 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 they're like, I need more of this, this three-dimensional uh, virtual reality matrix experience because I need to know what's going to happen. And then maybe enlightenment is like, meh. I, I've had enough of this show. <laughs> I'm not coming back. <laughs> yeah, just funny ideas. Right, let's end that there. Um, Chris, anything you want to promote or plug? Yeah, I'm, I, I have frequency technology that I, that I offer at my website, essentialvibes.com. Uh, it, it helps you connect to the earth. It helps your nervous system be strong. It, it definitely sounds strange to most people and consistently the only time people are like, wow, is when they actually try it. So definitely go, go onto the website, um, use the code VIBES30 and get 30% off, V-I-B-E-S 30, get 30% off and, and feel free to buy it, experience it yourself. I promise it works. Um, I, I, I wear it all the time and I, I definitely see crazy results when I do muscle testing. And what I have on the website is a muscle test that you can do so that you can try it at your home. And if, if you don't like it for whatever reason, send it back to us. We'll, we'll give you back the money. No, no problem whatsoever. 
But I, I really believe in this in this technology because I, I found it's uh, really useful to balance all of the, the technology use that's, that's going on, all the Wi-Fi's and, and the microwaves and now with 5G coming out, all of this, it just helps ground and center your body even so when you you're can, not connected. You can, you can buy the so, muscle tester and, and you'll send it. No, no, so basically you buy the product and it, it's, it's just going to be like a piece of jewelry that we've encoded. I, I know the inventor. It's a really cool process. We, we encode it with the frequency 432, huh. 432 hertz. Uh, and it's, it's really good for your body. And it's like a, a frequency that's everywhere on the earth and in our, in our solar system as far as we can understand. Um, but when, when we test with this frequency, um, we've seen plants grow better. We've seen uh, people be stronger and people who are sensitive can use their phones even even 5G phones, there's one woman, she had a 5G phone, she could hardly use it uh, because it was just all the vibes coming out of it were so bad. She put on a bracelet, she could use it. She was okay with it after that because the, the frequency that was on her was stronger than the frequency that was being emitted from the phone. And so the frequency from the phone didn't penetrate her body, didn't Amazing. affect her nervous system anymore. So at any rate, you can, you can check that out on my website, essentialvibes.com, use code VIBES30. And uh, yeah, it's it's just one. It's just my offering. So thank you so much for listening uh, for listening today. And, and Oliver, thank you for having me on. I really appreciated this. It's it. I, I was thinking about it the other day. We have a really cool relationship. You and I kind of see each other once every every so often, and we catch up publicly for the world to hear. <laughs> and and not so much about catching up on mundane things, but sort of catching up on the latest developments of our mind. Or thoughts, so yeah. It's really special. <laughs> it is, man. I love it. Right, let me, let me uh, stop that there, wait there. Hey, y'all, if you've made it to the end of listening to my podcast, would you mind rating me and leaving a review? And if you want to see what I get up to in my days off, then follow me on Instagram. It's yes, King Oliver. Bye.